Hi guys, and welcome to our first project of the semester, which is going to be a micrography portrait. Each one of our projects will correspond to a certain principle of design. The principles of design describe ways that artists use the elements of design in a work of art. Remember the elements of the design that we learned about in Art Foundations? Those were line, shape, value, color, texture, proportion, and space. This semester, we're going to learn another seven tools to add to our art toolbox. The seven principles of design that we'll be learning about this semester are balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and unity. Balance is the sense of even distribution of the elements in a work of art. So let's talk about the historical context behind the project that we're going to be doing first. So what is micrography? Micrography is a Jewish art form developed in the 9th century with parallels in Christianity and Islam, utilizing minute letters to form representational, geometric, and abstract designs. This intricate decorative technique was first used in Egypt and the land of Israel in the 9th and 10th centuries. Within the Islamic culture, the written word was decorative and it was often transformed into elaborate patterns. Jews living near this geographical area around Egypt and Israel saw this and decided to use it to embellish their biblical codices and the illustrated text from the Hebrew Bible. This piece is labeled the Ten Commandments. The text in the book of Exodus describes the revelation at Mount Sinai and it culminates with the giving of the Ten Commandments, a representation of which is formed in this micrograph. The balance of the design is composed of the entire text of the Song of Songs, long understood by Jews to represent the love between God and Israel. This art form gained popularity when it spread throughout Europe in the early 13th century. Bibles that were produced in France and in Germany featured elaborate ornamental panels that introduced the individual books of the Bible. Micrography declined in later on in the 16th century due to criticism by a rabbi complained that the designs made the text hard to read and understand. Micrography made a comeback in 1798 with the invention of lithography, which is a form of printmaking. Prints of biblical portraits and panoramas of holy sites in Israel were mass-produced and distributed, and they were spread to a wide audience. Popular postcards featuring the micrographic portraits of renowned rabbis were produced in Europe at the beginning of the 20th century. The portrait of Rabbi Khan, formed from a French text, is drawn from his writing. Micrographic prints were frequently sold by charitable institutions to raise funds, or they were sent as gifts to philanthropic donors, um, just as an appreciation for their contributions. In many cases, the artist included generic text that expressed gratitude to the donor, and left a blank space for the insertion of a particular benefactor's name. Now I want to talk to you guys about micrography and typography today. So Leon Azule is a modern Jewish artist who still uses the art of micrography. And this is him right here. So he was born in Morocco in 1945. He's still alive and he lives in Israel. Um, and so really uh, living in this birthplace of Jewish, Jewish mysticism has inspired him to search for means of expressing his passion for painting and for the Bible. So his paintings depict scenes from the Hebrew Bible uh, blended with biblical passages. So you guys can see in this narration um, and this depiction of Exodus, you see the fine font right there. That's actually the entire book of Exodus written in the sky, but he's combined it with this beautiful watercolor painting as well. On the other hand, typography, which is a more modernized and digital form of micrography, is used today a lot in art and in marketing. So you'll see them use it for movie posters and for things like that. Uh, the typography is the art and process of creating and arranging text in an appealing way. Like I said, usually used for advertising, um, branding, for movie posters, anything digital with font that you'll see. That is all included within the typography um, form. The question that I want you to answer in creating this artwork is who has had a positive impact on your life? Um, this could be a historical figure, athlete, politician, artist, coach, teacher, family member, anyone who's had a significant impact on your life. And I want you to also think about why they've had an impact as well. 
So the overall requirements for this project are these three things right here. First of all, like I just said, make sure you choose an influential person and relevant text. Second of all, maintain proportion by utilizing the grid method when you draw your portrait. And third, uh, pay close attention to neatness and craftsmanship. Um, that's especially when you're writing your words for this project. So here are a few of last year's examples um, that I thought were really impressive. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what some people have done in the past. All right, let's get started. So first, let's talk about your sketchbook exercise that you'll do to get ready for this project. Uh, first, find your reference photo and try and find one that's taken from the shoulders up, um, decent quality, and go ahead and put your photo into a Google slide. After you do that, double click on the photo and then click on image options. After that, click on recolor and choose grayscale, which is I believe the bottom middle option. Um, next, you'll go ahead and adjust the contrast to 100%, so slide that bar all the way over. And then what you can do with the brightness is just kind of adjust it to what you think looks best. After you've got your photo all prepped and ready, go ahead and send it to me so I can print it off from my printer and I'll make sure that it's the right size for you. Um, and then after that, go ahead and spend a few minutes in your sketchbook just quickly sketching um, the main outlines of your image. So try and concentrate on the proportions and the shapes of the black sections of your photograph and just spend a few minutes doing that. After that, just jot down what text or quotes you're going to be using to uh, fill in those black spaces. Now once you have your sketchbook exercise done and you have your photo printed, go ahead and grab a piece of that large Bristol paper and get started. The first thing you'll do is draw a grid on both your image and your drawing paper. So one inch squares on your photograph and two inch squares on your large paper. After that, go ahead and sketch the outlines of the black shapes onto your large paper just using a pencil. Once you're done with that, fill in the black shapes by writing words again in pencil. You have the choice to write your words straight across and just kind of continue them and skip any of the white spaces. Or alternatively, you could kind of follow the silhouette and kind of curve your words. That's completely up to you. Um, once you have that done, trace your words with fine black markers. And don't, don't trace the outlines, just the words. And once you're all done with that and you've allowed it a little bit of time to dry, then erase all remaining pencil marks. And voila, you have your micrography portrait.